This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. When we discussed adjusting profits for tax purposes, we mentioned that depreciation was an estimate or a guess and needed to be added back because um, it couldn't be controlled by the revenue basically. Um, it's a provision outside of revenues control. Um, but assets depreciate in value. It is a, um, an accounting expense and needs to be um, looked at um, for tax purposes. Uh, so you've got instead capital allowances, which is very much controlled by the revenue, very much rules based. There is also in capital allowances a lot of law. Now you'll be grateful to know that you don't actually have to know what all the legal cases are. You don't have to know them, but there are lots and lots of things that have taken place and made their way through the courts in order to establish what is, what isn't, what you can claim, what you can't, all of those various different aspects. And they've kind of filtered down into these rules that we've got here that we're going to go through now. So it's a tax version of depreciation, uh, which replaces that disallowable expenditure. Uh, there is then something new. It's called the Structures and Buildings Allowance, uh, which we will look at um, in this chapter. Um, this is the kind of legal stuff that plant has been defined by legal cases as assets that perform an active function in the business, something that the trade is carried on and includes office furniture, equipment, things like that. You will never have to define what is and what isn't. So um, you can just read through that. So plant and machinery is the main thing that you're going to have to do capital allowances on, as well as cars. Um, so we prepare what's known as a capital allowance computation. And again, it will be set out with columns, rows, proformers. Uh, needs to be done nice, neat, well presented, all the lines in the right places. Um, it's prepared for an accounting period of the business um, and not for the tax year. So it links with, it links clearly with the accounts. So if you have a year ended 31st of December set of accounts for 12 months, then the computation for capital allowances will be for that same period of time. Now there are three main types of allowance that's available given to you in the rates. So what do you always do? You check. And what do you never do? You never guess. So if you want to stop now uh, the lecture and go and have a look at that. I did mention in the introduction that it may be worth having your tax rates at hand so that you've got them. Uh, so that you can refer to them when you're doing various different things. So let's look at the three that we've got. The first one is the Annual Investment Allowance, which is the AIA. Um, it's currently a million pounds. Um, now it provides an allowance of 100% of a million pounds worth of expenditure on plant and machinery in a 12 month period. That's important. Any expenditure in excess of a million pounds then qualifies for a written down allowance, which we'll explain later. You can have it on all expenditure except cars. Can't have it on cars. And if your set of accounts that you've prepared is less than 12 months, then you have to pro rata it down. If it's more than 12 months, then you have to pro rata it up. And you'll see that. So an example, a three month set of accounts to December 22, the limit would only be 250,000 because the million pounds is a three month is for 12 months. Written down allowance, 18% if it's in the main pool and 6% if it's in the special rate pool. And it's on a reducing balance basis. 
once we've been through the rules and we've done um, a couple of examples and illustrations you'll probably find that this um, clicks fairly quickly there are a lot of marks to be had in a capital allowances computation it will come up in the exam because the capital allowances computation is the same for individuals slight quirks for limited companies but it's the same as individuals and partners so it can come up anywhere and there are lots of marks to be had because you have to put your assets in the right column you have to know what allowance you can claim calculate it correctly and deal with various different other things um, but the, I found my practice have found that um, over the years students find these once it once it's clicked student find these um, um, fairly simple to do and um, once you can do them with confidence you will be able to get a lot of marks in an exam up to about 10 I would think marks potentially in an exam when it comes okay now there is a first year allowance 100% on zero emissions cars okay now the written down allowance on the cars you will see there so a new it has to be a new one not a second hand one if it doesn't say new it's not new if it doesn't say new you don't get the first year allowance now also a first year allowance is never time apportioned it is what it is all right so first year allowance on a car a new electric car is 100 percent if the emissions in your car is between 1 and 50 grams per kilometer then you'll get 18 percent and it goes into the main pool if it's over 50 grams per kilometer then it's only six percent and that goes into the special rate pool Now, the date you bought the asset is irrelevant. It doesn't matter because a lot of clients that I know, um, they actually buy assets right at the end of the, t at the end of the accounting period. So they may have only asset owned the assets for a week, two weeks. It doesn't matter when you bought them. As long as the date that's in the question fits in that accounting period, that's what you're looking at. But you never apportion um, for the length of time that you have um, owned the vehicle. So let's have a look at the first illustration because the illustrations are much easier to, 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 to see. I think students find it so much easier uh, once they've got the rules. I mean, learning rules, you've got to learn them that simply. But once you can actually see them in practice in a, in a question, then you will find that it is much um, easier to deal with. So Richard started to trade 1st of January 2022. He prepares accounts to the 31st of March. So this is a three month set of accounts. Um, he, met, he bought the following assets. So in the period up to March 22, 1st of January, he bought some plant machinery. So you're never gonna have to decide whether it is, it'd be obvious for the question. He paid 220,000 pounds for it. Then on the 20th, he bought some computer equipment for £80,000. Then in the following year, which is a 12 month, so that's a period, which is three, 12, so don't forget. And this is a year, so that's 12. He bought some machinery for £30,000. So what we do, we always head up our computations. Always put a heading. Examiner knows this is a capital allowance computation. Um, pro forma down the left hand side headings across the top one of the difficulties with um, capital allowances I would say is working out how many columns you need this is a total column at the end oops not a very straight line that's your total AIA and the mate now this is a calculation column so at the end of the day that column should be empty and it should all be in the main pool or you've allowed uh, disallowed it so the first thing you do we've we put a heading that it's only three months we then put in our additions always put in all the additions uh, first first of january bought some plant and machinery think 
Can I claim AIA? Yes, I can. Put it in the column 20th of January. Dates are always useful. Put them in. Computer, 80,000. Add them together. Now, the AIA is pro rata because it's only a three month period. So the maximum AIA is only 250,000. That goes straight across to your total column. Now there's a balance of 50,000 that we haven't claimed any allowances on. So that balance has gone into the main pool because we are, can now claim written down allowance on that expenditure. So it's a maximum of three twelves because it's pro rata times 18% times £50,000. It's key. Show your workings. It's the rule. You, by doing this here, you've shown that you understand that written down allowance and AIA are pro rata. You will get marks for this. You know that it's 18% and you know what you've worked it out on. So £2,250 is the allowance that we can claim. Again, that's put in there and that's our total to be deducted from the traded, adjusted trade profits that um, we may have done separately. And we have what's known as a tax written down value carried forward to the next year of 47,750. So next year we can then put in our additions, take away any disposals, do our written down allowances. That's the process. Work out the columns, pro forma down the side. Add in the additions, take out any disposals, work out the allowances. So we have in March 23, we have a tax written down value brought forward of £47,750. Now the question tells us that we bought some uh, planter machinery on the 19th of May. We've put that in the AIA column. You'll notice that at the end of the day, this column is empty. It's a calculation column only. Important that you leave it over there, use it for calculation. Um, it makes it so much easier to do. So we're going to get AIA of 30,000. That goes in our end column. So we wipe this out. So this again is empty. We've wiped it out. We've uh, fully written it off to tax 100%. So 47,750 there is in our main pool. And we're entitled to 18% written down allowance which is £8,595, giving us a tax written down forward, um, tax written down value carried forward for next year. We add the two allowances together and that figure then goes to our trade profits, which we have adjusted and we can then um, work out what our, our taxable profits are. Now, just one thing to bear in mind. When I, when I do this, and I find it so much easier for students to take a hold of it, this has got brackets around it, and so is this. Okay. And the reason we keep the brackets on, or I individually keep the brackets on, is because that figure has to be deducted from the trade profits. Now, you'll notice with your BPP, particularly, that the end column doesn't have brackets on it. Why? I don't know, but it doesn't have brackets on it. Um, I prefer to keep brackets on that end column because in an exam situation where you're under pressure, if it's got brackets on it and you're copying it, you will deduct it from your adjusted profits. Um, it's entirely up to you. I just think it makes more sense that way. The special rate pool. So we've got a main pool, which has got all our assets in it. Now, some assets have to go into this special rate pool, and they are the following. Any integral feature of the building, inside the building. You've got lifts, escalators, lighting systems, water systems, heating systems, 
they're not the building themselves but they're integral they're part of the building they need to go into the special rate pool because they're long life assets they're going to be there a long time any long life asset and it will tell you in the exam question it's got a working life of more than 25 years and the expenditure is more than a hundred thousand and don't forget your cars that are over 50 grams per kilometer so shall we have a look and see how that looks in an example we've got this illustration here that gives us that Stephen prepares accounts to the 31st of March written down value on the main pool brought forward as 40,000 now the following transactions took place during the year to March 23 We'll see in May that he bought some plant and equipment. In June, he bought a car, CO2 emissions, 40 grams. In July, he bought another car, but these have got bigger emissions. Okay. So these are instructions as to where you should be putting these assets. In March 23, which is in this tax year, he bought a new electric car. A new you see how they're giving you clear instructions so that you can just bring the rules back to your mind and put the, everything in the correct place. Okay, counting period, heading across the top. These are the calculation columns. We've got a main pool, a special rate pool, and our total column. Okay, so let's put everything in. The written down value brought forward needs to go into the main pool because it told you that in the question. Now, additions, everything that qualifies for AIA. The plant and machinery is the only one. You cannot have AIA on cars. So you add in the plant and machinery to this calculation column. Do the AIA calculation. It's 12 months, million pounds, plenty. Put that straight into the final column. That's your total. Now the other additions, we have a car with 40 grams, so check the rule, it's in the rates, put that in the main pool, the one with the high emissions goes in the special rate pool. Add them all in, underline them, subtotal them, so you know what you're dealing with. Now always do the additions and disposals first, everything from the question needs to be copied and put down into your answer then start doing um, your uh, written down allowances so we've got some totals there the main pool is 18 percent of 51,000 9,002 straight into this column here written down allowance on a special rate pool is only six percent check it use the rates now we then bought another car and this is an addition qualifying for um, first year allowance um, a hundred percent first year allowance never pro rated it is what it is okay that's a hundred percent and goes across to here add them all up that is your total that goes to your adjusted trade profits and you have two figures to carry forward to the next accounting period Always finish off your pro formas, please. Double underline, finish them all off so they're nice and neat.